JFT, just fair and direct. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to JFD's daily market review for August the 25th. I am Haralamos Pissuros, head of research here at JFD, and I will talk about uh, yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events, and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds uh, to read the rest, and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar traded lower or unchanged against all but one of the other major currencies. It gained only versus CHF, while it underperformed against NZD, AUD, and CAT in that order. The greenback was found virtually unchanged against the JPY, the Euro, and the British Pound. Now, the weakening of the US dollar against its Australian, New Zealand, and Canadian counterparts suggests that the markets may have continued trading in a risk one fashion yesterday and today in Asia. That said, turning our gaze to the equity world, we see that major EU indices traded mixed, with uh, Germany's DAX being the main gainer and France's um, CAC 40 losing the most. Uh, later in the US, appetite was improved, uh, with both the S&P 500 and Nasdaq hitting fresh record highs for a second day in a row. But today in Asia, the optimism deter deteriorated somewhat again. Although China's Shanghai Composite and South Korea's KOSPI traded in the green, Japan's Nikkei 225 and Hong Kong's Hang uh, Seng uh, slid. Now, it seems that the news over the approval of of uh, Pfizer's vaccine by the FDA may have allowed some market participants to continue adding to their risk exposure, especially in the US, where more people may get encouraged to take the treatment after the approval. However, remember what we said yesterday. We said that heading into the Jackson Hole Economic Symposium, investors may become more cautious as they are eager to find out what are the Fed's plans with regards to monetary policy. Fed Chief Powell, who sounded dovish at the press conference following the latest FOMC gathering, is scheduled to speak on Friday, and following the strong employment and inflation data, it would be interesting to see whether he has uh, changed uh, his um, mind to support an earlier quantitative easing tapering. Up until last week, and especially following the minutes of the last uh, meeting, which revealed that officials largely expect the process to begin this year, market participants may have added to their bets over a September action. However, on Friday, Dallas Fed President Robert Kaplan said he might reconsider his hoggish stance if the virus hurts the economy, while on Monday, data showed that a business activity in the US slowed for a third straight month due to the virus spreading. This may have lessened uh, confidence that uh, Powell will provide a clear quantitative easing uh, tapering timeline. Therefore, with the outcome very uncertain, we believe that investors may maintain a cautious approach uh, heading into the event. As we noted yesterday, for the, gre for the greenback to resume its, uh, its recent uptrend, uh, we believe that uh, fresh signals over early tapering may be needed. If we don't get them from Powell this week, traders may sell the dollar, but not massively as they may keep an eye on the next employment report scheduled for September 3rd, where another set of strong numbers may add credits to the case of beginning the tapering uh, process very soon. Now, as uh, for today's events, the agenda is, uh, is light today as well, with the only data worth mentioning being Germany's IFO survey for August and the US durable goods orders for July. With regards to the IFO numbers, the current assessment index is anticipated to have inched up to 100.8 from 100.4, but the expectations one is forecast to have slid to 100 from 101.2. This is likely to take the business climate index down to 100.4 from 100.8.
As for the US durable goods, uh, headline orders are forecast to have declined 0.2% month over month after rising 0.9% in June, while the core rate is expected to have hit steady at 0.5%. As uh, for the speakers, we will uh, only get to hear from ECB Vice President uh, Luis uh, De Guindos. So, that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the Weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 7 o'clock a.m. GMT. You can find the link in the description below. So goodbye, have a great day, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. JFT, just fair and direct.